I noticed that all of us, if we watch the clock and you can't stop it, it uh, we're all getting older every day. Everybody except Francis Burris and his lovely wife Nancy, they have not gotten a day older since high school. I, I don't know how you do it. I hope it's in our genes. Yeah, I, it, I voted for you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is a happy, happy thing. I love to come to these kind of things. Um, this is, it's like a dream come true for, for a lot of people. And there are a lot of people dreaming big things in South Carolina right now. I, I got to tell you a little funny story. I, I was on the way, I'm a Republican, so I went to the Republican convention back in the summer. And on the way up, I asked Peggy if she'd ever in her wildest dream, in her wildest dream, seen, seen old Henry up there uh, going to nominate Donald Trump for president of the Republican convention in Cleveland, Ohio. She said, Henry, I hate to tell you, I've never seen you in any of my wildest dreams. <laughs> That's what happened when you marry a girl from Spartanburg. Yeah. That's what happened. But uh, y'all, we this is uh, this is like a vision. I think yours is like mine. And Tommy, what you're saying about the lessons you learned from your daddy and the saw a little baby walking back there and, and, and these people, uh, that is that's something. All of that I believe is uniquely South Carolina, because what you said about going around the world and seeing people. It's the same exact thing that the chairman of BMW said up in Spartanburg at their 25th anniversary when they were getting ready to spend over a billion, a billion more dollars to, to increase the size of that plant and then almost another billion to uh, renovate the, and upgrade the equipment they had in it. And he said, and I quote, he said, I've been, all, been over the world, been all across the United States, and there's not another place like South Carolina. He said, this is a handshake state. And what that means is when the people tell you they're going to do something, they give you their word, they will come to work, they will take pride in the work, they will be loyal to the company, they will be proud and do a good job, he said you can count on it. And that goes for everybody they've dealt with. That's, a, that's something they don't say anywhere else. And we have assets here in the state they don't have anywhere else. Everybody doesn't have an ocean. You can look at the map and see that. So we, we, ride, we ride on it. And with the great port that's getting deeper, we'll be able to handle those big ships, biggest in the world. You ought to see the size of them. Those things can carry 13, 14,000 of those big containers that you see on the truck. It's, it's just remarkable. They'll be able to come in and out two at a time, 24 hours a day. Now they can do it at high tide. That port is a great asset. You don't spell it P-O-R-T. P it's M-O-N-E-Y. That's how you spell port. And we have one inland port now going to Greer crossing I-85 with Norfolk Southern and another one we just broke ground for going through Dillon and going across 95 where CSX runs from the port up there. We're the only state in the country that has one real inland port and getting ready to have two connected to a deep water port and not many years, South Carolina, Port of Charleston, and Port of New York, New Jersey will be the dominant ports on the Atlantic coast. That means you can sell those boats all over the world from right here. And I hope you do that. Because uh, there's no power in a small idea. You've got to think big. And it creates energy. It gets you out to bed in the morning. And that's what I see happening all over South Carolina. We have the best technical college system in the whole world. We have people started in 1961. We've been lucky. We're not lucky, we, we have chosen to have good leadership in business and in government and other places uh, for many years in South Carolina. As you know, we've been through everything from the beginning, from 1670. We, we, we've been through everything that the world has to offer, good and bad. And here we are today. We're strong, as the chairman said, and as you said, we're different. And we are right on the cusp of great economic growth, more than we've ever seen before. And I remind everybody at the time of the revolution, this was the richest place in the new world. And all the, all the explorers had been writing back to the kings and queens, their sovereigns, saying there's no place like this anywhere that we've been. Because of the vegetation, the animals, the water, the climate, uh, the fertileness of the soil, all that. And, and we, we still have all that. Great technical college system that is producing the kinds of workers. We've got a big gap. We need more of those kind of work. And those jobs are different. In manufacturing, they don't carry toolboxes anymore. They carry laptops and computers. And those jobs pay money anywhere from fifty-five to a hundred thousand dollars. We got twenty-two-year-old buying house after getting out of the technical college system with a two-year associate's degree and making plenty of money. We have no college debt. 
and going into a job that's making more than their parents combined. And the same parents who are urging them to go to a four-year college and get a degree in French literature. And there they are. <laughs> so it's, the, the, that workforce has changed. And we have, as, as uh, Wilbur Lewis, who is the, uh, Wilbur Ross, who's the head of the U.S. Uh, Department of Commerce, says South Carolina is a model for the rest of the country in what it's doing in workforce development. And he's, I've heard him say that several times. So the last time is when Samsung came to South Carolina. They're up in, in Newberry now. So we have that. We have great people. We have the great uh, universities, uh, research universities that are just cascading inventions and innovation down that's resulting in entrepreneurial uh, work and investment and, and all of these things. We have no other state and a right to work law, which is very important. No other state has all of these things. We're the only one. And I think what that means, as others have said, businesses are coming here. There's no other place like this in the world to invest in business, manufacturing, innovation, and brain power in South Carolina right now. So my, my job is to, to be sure that everybody knows that and to be sure that everyone understands that now is the time to get involved. Now is the time to encourage the young people. Go get that, get that education. If, if you can always go online now with the universities and you can finish your four year degree afterwards. But go ahead, don't get the college, all that college debt. If you want to do some of those kind of jobs, this is the place to do it. And we can we can outrun the country. We've been named the, the what is it, the best, best uh, state in the country for uh, manufacturing uh, in, in the United States. We get all those kind of accolades. Charleston has been the number one tourist destination in the world a number of times. We got the number one ballerina on the New York stage right now from <laughs> Columbia. We win in championship, baseball, basketball, football, horse riding, all kind of stuff. Soccer? No, not soccer. What's the other one? Uh, what's the one that's like soccer? Anyway, that one. Oh, yeah, that's it. So, uh, we, we, we are in a great position. And it's because of the natural resources that the good Lord gave us and by the great people we have that are now being recognized as, as being different. And finally, a little story. People tell me, I've heard it in different ways, different so many times from people out of state. They say, I can always tell when I'm in South Carolina. I don't have to need to see a map. I don't need to ask anybody. I don't need to look at directions. I can tell, how can you tell? So when I go into the restaurant and order my meal, between between getting my plate and getting my pill and leaving, the waitress will call me honey, sweetie, darling, and dear. That's how I know I'm in South Carolina. And it really does make a difference. So my congratulations to the Sportsman Code. I wish you were picking one I could afford. But uh, they, they are beautiful. I need about a, a 14 foot creek boat before I, what I need. But I'm sure, I'm sure you can help me find one. This is a great day. This is the kind of thing that results in in economic growth for the state, and ladies and gentlemen, when you have economic growth, when you have good work for people to do meaningful work that pays well, that makes them happy, what happens? Crime rate goes down, the domestic violence rate goes down, drug usage goes down, marriages go up, divorces go down, everything gets better. So th this is really the key to making South Carolina even a better place. So I appreciate your risk that you took and your investment, and as well as the investment you're making now. And I want you to know that anything that uh, anything the state government can do to help you and encourage you, and we, we're there to do it. So thank you and congratulations for a, a, a great job that you do. Thank you. Oh. Thank you.